Hello. So we'll start today our first lecture about endocrinology. Uh, I'll be with you. My name is Dr. Mahmoud Khalil, and I'm as well the head of the DFR in Africa. So, so actually, what is endocrinology? Majorly, the endocrine system uh, deals with this, uh, this science deals with uh, studying the endocrine system and the hormone that is produced by these type of glands. And as well, you need to, we will understand what are the types of the hormone producing cells, as well as how it's synthesized, modified, and released, and the transport and the trans transportation of the hormones, as well as the mechanism of the hormone, how it's got recognized by the receptors and the action of that hormone, how, to, how uh, it proceeds. As well, we will see the effect of the hormone on the target cells and how this will affect the physiological uh, process and the physiological mechanism inside an organ. Of course, um, any malfunction in this uh, signaling uh, of hormones will cause uh, to uh, inappropriate uh, hormone function and may lead to diseases. So actually, what are the lecture topics? Initially, we'll start with an introduction, then we'll go through the hormones and hormones action. We'll talk uh, starting the first uh, two glands. Uh, uh, one of them is the major gland, is the pituitary gland, and, one, and the other one which controls the pituitary gland, which is the hypothalamus. For the pituitary gland, actually, it is divided into uh, 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 majorly three parts, but the two parts that secrete hormones is the anterior and posterior pituitary part. So each, each of these uh, uh, part of the uh, pituitary gland uh, uh, secrete um, specific hormones. Then we'll go through the thyroid hormones, adrenal steroid hormones, gonadal steroid hormones, and as well as pancreatic hormones. Then we'll go through the gastrointestinal hormones and see how it affects our digestion mechanism, as well as the adrenaline hormones and the parathyroid hormones. So for the assessment, uh, uh, we have a midterm in week seven, then actually we have a presentation for topics uh, that you will know in the next few slides. And actually, it takes about uh, it, it. It will it will be uh, performed by you as a PPT as a presentation from week eleven, uh, 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 somewhere between week eleven and week fourteen, and we will decide on that. Uh, and have thirty percent as well as the midterm will have thirty percent, and then the final exam uh, will be around forty percent, and usually it's week fifteen or sixteen. So it's, uh, you must know that uh, uh, exams are uh, more probably, especially the final exam, we don't know yet about the midterm, but uh, more probably it will be uh, for sure on campus. So what about the presentation, which would be like assignments, you have to do it and it, it weighs around 30% of the mark. So basically you will have two hormones that uh, we will not deal with that hormone uh, as a topic uh, in the course. And it will be your responsibility to do a presentation for uh, these two hormones, actually the gross hormones and adrenal corticotropic hormones. So usually uh, the topics that you will deal for each hormone, it will start with hormone action. You need to set the, how the hormone works and the hormone functions and as well control for how, how the secretion of this hormone is secreted, is controlled, as well as the diseases which are associated with these hormone uh, abnormalities, uh, like uh, causes, uh, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and how uh, it can be prevented. I must note that uh, 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 you need to include the references you used and of course, it's not recommended to use any uh, info from the Wikipedia because actually it is not considered as a scientific uh, uh, reference. So basically, these two hormones, you need uh, uh, to divide the work among you, uh, you all in order to each one will take like a small part in this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, okay. So as I said, these are the topics of the presentation and you have, you, you have to follow the topics to be covered, as I just said. 
Okay, for the presentation as well, there is a template you need to use. So you need to have all of these students should have a template for the presentation. So usually the first slide will start with the university logo, the title of the talk and the topic, the course name and code and submit it to, of course, myself and your name and ID. The second slide will be the objective. So what you will deal is like, um, a, 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 bullets what you, you will deal in your presentation and then the other slides the following slide you need to stick the, to the format the headings any title will be font 24 aerial bold and as well the body text or all the text will be a, a font 20 aerial line spacing signal and the paragraph spacing are, is as well as six points before the last slide you need to set a conclusion and and of course at the end you need to say the references or where did you get the info. If it's a website, you will state it's a, you need to provide the link for that website, okay? So basically you have to follow all this uh, presentation template because it have a weight from this 30% of the mark. <clears throat> okay, let's continue. So actually in the chronology is concerned with the study of how the hormone is uh, biosynthesized, how it's stored, what is the chemistry of the hormone, what is the physiological function with the cells and the function within the cells of the endocrine gland, which usually secrete the, this type of chemical or uh, hormone or signal. The, as well, it deals with the study of hormones, the receptor that interact and, and interpret the signal, which actually is the hormone. And there as well, once the receptor is recognized, uh, it's, uh, once the receptor recognizes the hormone, it will start a chain of reaction, which is called the intracellular signaling pathway. In order to convey the signal from the surface of the cell or the target cell, into the DNA because a lot of genes have to be expressed as a result of the induction by the hormone. So what are uh, endocrine glands? Actually, these are distinct organs which are, are scattered throughout our body. And they only develop and their main function is to secrete hormones. In addition, there are some classical endocrine uh, 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 most actually of the endocrine glands are classical uh, organs there are some batches, uh, in, batches of cell, other cells is scattered all over our body and can as well secrete hormones. One of the famous example is myocytes. And of course, myo means muscle. So these myocytes actually in the atria of the heart, in the atria of heart, and they actually scattered, they are actually scattered in the cells here and as well, they are uh, scattered in the, cell in the wall of the stomach and small intestine. And these are called diffuse endocrine uh, uh, system, diffuse, because they, can't, they don't form a distinct organ, a distinct endocrine organ, but they still uh, secrete, they still able to secrete hormones as we will see later in the lectures. So what about coordination and, uh, and response? So all the multicellular organism in, inside the multicellular uh, organism, there must be a way to co coordinate the information conveyed all over the organism in order to regulate and integrate the function of differentiating cells. It's, got, it's a way of communicating and coordinating what will be done first what is the important to be done first and what is the least important that can be postponed. For the definition of the stimuli, actually the stimuli generally is any change in the organism environment. And these stimuli is, uh, we all organisms are equipped by special, special cells that have receptors and they can, once the receptor recognizes the stimuli, it will respond by effectors. And we, we have, all of the organs have two major uh, categories of effectors, either muscles or brands, uh, glands. And of course, the muscle, it can respond to a stimuli once it, what's, once it recognized by the receptor by contraction or relaxation. And the gland as well, the stimuli can lead to either secretion of the hormone or uh, stopping the secretion of the hormone. 
So as, as we just said, that the muscles respond to stimuli by contracting, for example, while glands respond to, stimuli, uh, to stimulus by secreting an enzyme, generally by enzyme or hormones. But you need to know that once the gland is, is secreting an enzyme, it will not consider it as an endocrine gland. Only glands that secrete hormones is called an endocrine gland. So what about coordination? So actually, it's a very important uh, characteristics of uh, organisms because receptor sense can sense the stimuli and the pass information to effectors to the appropriate effector. So most animals actually have two methods of sending information from receptors to effectors. Once there is a signal that have been recognized by the receptors on the target cell. We have a, we have a fast method by nervous, by nerves, which actually the nervous system, and we have a, a slow method by hormones, which actually we are dealing in that course is the endocrine system. So let's have a brief comparison between the nervous system and the endocrine system. So actually, as you all know, the nervous system is majorly consisting of, of neurons, while the endocrine system actually consists of glands. The type of information of the nervous system differ from the endocrine system. Actually, it's the electrical impulses in the nervous system, while the endocrine system actually it's all chemicals and basically hormones. And of course, the the pathway of the information in the nervous system is through nerve fibers, which consist, consist actually of axons and dendrites of the neurons. While the, for the endocrine system, uh, the information is uh, carried via blood. So actually hormone is dissolved in the blood plasma. And that's why the uh, speed of, the, of transcending information is, a, is a much slower in the endocrine system than the nervous system, because it needs to be dissolved in the blood until, and move with the blood until reaching its target organ. So that's why the transmission speed is very rapid in the nervous system, while in the endocrine system is a slow transmission. For the uh, longevity of the action, you can see that nervous system is a short term, short term because it's a very fast, very accurate, and you have the response uh, straight away and finishes straight away. While the endocrine system, it's a long term, and you can understand the difference well when you understand that the signal of the hormone is moving through the blood, which actually a hormone moving it through the blood. Once it reaches the target organ, there is a continuous supply of the signal of the hormone. So there is a continuous input over the receptor, and this will, will lead to a long-term effect of the hormone. But for the nervous system, you have a short-term effect because the signal moves as a nerve impulses, moves uh, with acute action at the site, either a gland or a muscle. So obviously you will have a target area for the nervous system, which is usually localized at the end of the neuron. But for the endocrine system, and since the effect of the hormone can target many organs, you have a dispersed target area through the body. For the feedback mechanism, what's the meaning of feedback? So it's a way to terminate the signal when the body don't need the signal. So if, if we're talking about the nervous system, there is no feedback mechanism actually, because once the impulse have originated in the cell body of the neuron and moved over the axon, you can't reverse this propagation of the nerve impulse, okay? It can be terminated from the start, but you will never have a negative feedback to stop the propagation of the nerve impulse uh, of the nerve impulse through the nerve fibers. The, this is totally different uh, from the, uh, in the endocrine system, as we will see later, there is a lot of uh, mechanism in order to negatively regulate and to stop the release, stop the release of the hormone in, in case the body uh, don't need the action of that hormone. Any question about the last few slides? No, doctor. Okay, we'll continue. 
What about the difference of the endocrine gland and exocrine gland? Which we usually say for the exocrine gland, it's a digestive glands. Of course, the endocrine, the, these are glands with no duct. Ducts always present in the exocrine gland or the digestive gland. And of course, the endocrine glands secrete hormones, while the other gland secrete enzyme, mucus, or even acid like in the stomach from the stomach wall. The, the secretion of the endocrine gland is directly to the blood without the need of a duct, while the secretion of the digestive gland usually do not pass to blood and usually pass into cavities like the digestive enzyme, like the pancreatic enzymes, usually is pulled inside the uh, digestive system. So hormones are released from endocrine glands, which actually ductless gland, and circulate in the body until reaching to the target organ, to, to the target organ, organ, either to speed up or slow down or alter the activity of this organ. It depends on the kind of the receptor which is localized on the surface of the organ, as we will see later in the lectures. So actually most of the hormone, most of the hormone in our body is uh, actually proteins or uh, polypeptides and proteins. So the hormone needs after finishing or performing its function, it needs to be broken down because the existence of the, of the hormone, it will promote additional action for, for that hormone, which actually it's not needed because uh, 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 the need for this uh, physiological function that is uh, uh, initiated by this hormone is terminated. So usually the mechanism for uh, 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 converting the hormone into inactive forms uh, is uh, actually exists in the liver. So liver changes this hormone into inactive compound and then it is excreted by the kidney because it's very dangerous to have elevated levels of hormones inside our body after performing the action of the hormone itself. So let's go for some definitions. So for hormones, as a general definition, it's a substance or chemicals that provide the chemical basis for communication between cells. It's a way of communi communication. The bro it's actually the, the products of a ductless gland and it is released into blood, the general circulation in order to respond to changes in homeostasis. So usually our body has a homeostasis uh, uh, stages in our body. Once these are altered, it needs to be adjusted by the level of the hormone in our uh, circulating blood. What about paracrine secretion? Paracrine. Actually, this term is used to describe the release of locally acting substance. In other words, a, a, a hormone is secreted from a cell that affects a neighbor cells, not so far as the target cells. So actually, we usually describe it as a local hormone action. What about pheromones? Actually, hormones correspond to hormones, our hormones, but actually these are the hormonal substance released by an animal that influence response in another animal. So usually as an example, you can see that mosquitoes, for instance, mosquitoes, it's, an, it's a different organism, secrete in the air uh, these hormones, the male mosquitoes, male mosquitoes, uh, sorry, the female mosquitoes, secreting the air a type of pheromone that can be uh, carried by air and be sensed by the female, by the male mosquito in, in the season of fertilization. So what about phytohormones? Actually, it's a, the same, uh, it's a, the, uh, the corresponding hormone, but in plants. What about growth hormone, uh, growth factors? Actually, growth factor is it, it's, it, it's a, a, a type of compounds or substance or molecules that aids and help in the signaling between cells. So biologically active substance secreted by gland, either endocrine, paracrine, or autocrine. Now we know what's endocrine, that it's endocrine hormones that have a biological effect far away. And when we say far away, we mean far away from the source of the secretion of the hormone. While paracrine, this went 
hormones have the effect locally. So that's why nearby the secreting the cells of the hormone. While the autocrine, when the hormone is secreted and have a local effect on the same cell type that secreted that type of hormone. So the hormone function can be summarized into gross and development. Uh, that's uh, the thyroid, gross hormone, sex steroids, and cortisol for uh, a function in reproduction, like the estrogen, testosterone, FSLH, FSH, LH, and thyroid the hormones, homeostasis, like majorly the thyroid hormone and cortisol. It, it, uh, one of the major function is uh, responding to change in the environment, like called cortisol and aldosterone. And the hormone can be classified into proteins, amino acids, and the steroids, and we'll deal uh, with every uh, type of these hormones uh, later in the lectures. The mechanism of action of hormone, we'll see the, the mechanism later on, but generally the hormones, as we just said, it circulate in the bloodstream. It can be bound to a transporter protein or can be free in the blood. Actually, the free hormone is an active hormone. Once it reaches a target uh, cell or organ, it, it can enter cell uh, to alter its, uh, the biological activity of that target cell. Well, actually, other hormone can be carried inside the blood by binding to transporter proteins. Once these uh, transporter protein transport this hormone to its target cell, it will be, the hormone will be released from the transporter protein. So her hormones actually integrate developmental events, such as it can integrate between these uh, developmental events, like proliferation, gross differentiation. And it can function in the coordination between the metabolismic secretion, movement, respiration, and perspiration and reproduction. The hormone regulations actually, actually, it must be regulated. Uh, you have a lot of feedback, feedback loops and actually a negative feedback loop. You have a circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm for the secretion of some types of hormone. You must have a receptor specificity for each hormone in order to specify the function of each hormone. And you have as well to need to understand for the regulation, it's important we have the receptor concentration because some type, uh, some, uh, um, uh, some type of diseases you have in, in enough amounts of hormones secreted by your glands, but you don't have enough receptor, specific receptor for that hormone on the target cells. So eventually you will lose the interaction between the hormone and its specific receptor. So you will lack the physiological uh, function of that hormone. So hormone receptors are found either hormone receptor exposed on the surface of the cell or within the cell. And actually these depend on the type of hormone. Basically it depends on the ability, the ability of the hormone to migrate through the cell membrane of the target cell. So if this type of hormone cannot migrate through the cell membrane of the target cell, so it needs to attach on the receptor on the cell surface. But if this hormone able to migrate through the cell membrane, so it must have a intracellular receptor inside the cell. And basically this mechanism depends on the nature of the hormone itself. If the hormone is lipophilic, it can pass through the membrane. If the, if the hormone is hydrophobic, uh, uh, is lipo, uh, lipo, uh, uh, hydrophilic, is hydrophilic, it will not pass. And in order to exert its action, it should bind to a receptor on the surface of the cell. And he, here you can see a figure that summarizes all the body glands, it's starting from the bineal gland in the brain two of the major glands in our body that will take around two or three lectures, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. We have the thyroid gland, above it, the parathyroid glands. We have the thymus, we have the pancreas, and we have the adrenal gland above the kidney. Of course, pancreas is one of the very um, uh, good example 
for an endocrine gland that's an exocrine gland because it's called a mixed gland. It can secrete enzymes as well as hormones. And of course, you have the ovary in female and testes in males, and both of these reproductive organs secrete the steroid hormone. And actually, steroid hormone, it's a type of hormone that is lipophilic. So actually, it can easily uh, penetrate the cell membrane of target cells. And this concludes our first lecture for today as an introduction. And I'm waiting for any question. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs>